Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna go through another edit of mine. Uh, although the feedback overall has been pretty positive on my editing videos that I've posted on the channel, I've heard from two or three people, they've requested for me to go through an edit where I go through something that I've shot a little wider. Now, in reality, what they're asking for is for me to go through an edit where I've shot something at something around 20 millimeters, 17 millimeters, or even wider on a full frame camera. And here's the reality. I really don't, for the most part, shoot anything that wide anymore. Um, when I have, it's mostly back when I was doing real estate. And I just really don't shoot real estate listings anymore. If I can, the widest I try to shoot for most uh, spaces is no wider than 24 millimeters. I'm just not a big fan of the distortion and stretch that it starts to add to the images when you're shooting that wide. And granted, I still have my Sigma 14 to 24 wide angle lens, but I have this in my back pocket if I need it. So if it's a space that's extremely tight and small and narrow, yeah, of course, I'll pull out the, the wide, wider angle lens, but I only use this if I have to. So while the image that we're going to look at is kind of a wider shot, I think in the thumbnail, I wrote that it's 30 millimeters and upon closer inspection, it's actually 28. So we're, we're pretty close to what I would consider a wider shot. Although I did screen record the process, we're just gonna breeze through real quick the, uh, the edits and tweaks that I did in Lightroom. I honestly, I'm not one of these photographers that spends a ton of time in Lightroom. I just use it to do some really basic adjustments, tame the highlights, raise the shadows a little bit, obviously try to fix or correct the white balance, adjust it accordingly to either the natural light or the flashlight, whatever I was using or ever, however I was shooting in that space. I use Lightroom to correct the geometry of the image, try to remove any barrel distortion, make sure the verticals are correct, make sure the image is level, etc. And that's really about all I do in Lightroom. Most of the heavy lifting I do in Photoshop. So let's get to that. So this is my base layer or what I thought I was going to use as my base layer. The more I started to look at this image, this image was, in my opinion, a little bit too bright. What I was going to do was stack these flash pop images on top of this one. And because I really wanted to dial up the drama, I wanted to use most of the highlights and shadows from the flash layers on a lot of the prominent things in the shot, that being the chairs, the couch, and the, uh, the stools on the back of the island. So all I did was take that image, drop it by a third of a stop, and just so it's slightly darker than this one, as you can see, and I, I ended up using that one as my base layer. And then after that, all I really do is just start stacking these flash pops. For the most part, I use lighten mode. Here's an exception though, this very next layer, I have this as normal. And this one, I'm standing roughly about here. And again, these flash pops are really trying to dramatize, emphasize, or exaggerate the natural light mostly just coming from these windows here. Now there are windows the other direction, and while I didn't want to cut out the light from those windows completely, again, the point of these flash pops from that direction is just to emphasize and exaggerate the natural light from this direction, that's all. I add some flash to the back of the island to show off the, uh, the stools there. I do run into a problem though, we'll get to here in a bit. This layer specifically was just to add some highlights to these chairs that are in the foreground, a little bit of difference there on that side of the coffee table, nothing too crazy. And then here is the issue that I ran into with the bar stools. Like a dummy, I completely forgot to straighten out the bar stools before I started shooting. It wasn't until I was over and looking at the bar stools in the middle of taking these exposures that I realized the bar stools were not perfect. They were not aligned correctly. So uh, I realigned them and then in the just retook those shots. And obviously now I can't blend these shots together. So I had to blend this together using normal. And then as you can see here, it's okay. It's a little bit too hot on this side of the island. So I was actually standing in another part of the kitchen, but shooting in roughly the same direction. And again, using normal mode, I used that flash pop to blend in some of the highlights and shadows on kind of the backsplash uh, range area, but then used some of that as well to tame this overly bright area on the right side of the island. And one of my favorite aspects of this space, this is one of my most favorite spaces I've ever shot. It's just the 
Detailed choices in here are so cool and unique. Maybe you see a ton of places like this in your area. We just don't here in, in Kansas City. They're kind of few and far between. But I really wanted to showcase and again emphasize the highlights and shadows with this these little three wood accents in this thing hanging above uh, hanging above the island here. So all I did was I had a I was standing roughly here, kind of by the bar area, using the octobox, pointed up in that direction, and just uh, blended in. Yeah, uh, we're in lighten mode. Blended some of the highlights and shadows that were coming from that flash, and yeah, some of that bled over here uh, up against that wall, but I'm, I'm not too picky on that. And then this layer here labeled uh, 0309, all I did, I'm standing behind this column and just popping a flash to add a little bit of, I guess you could call it fill lights to this bar area. I didn't wanna go crazy, I just wanna add a little bit more detail back there. And then as you can see, one of the final issues was just this dark area. This is kind of another living room sitting, a TV media area. And I'm standing again behind the column, but now facing the other direction. And just very subtly, yeah, adding some light. And I really love, again, some of the design details and choices were amazing. I really loved the, the woodwork. And so I, I stood, again, kind of behind the couch, but popped a flash just to light up this woodwork here on the back of the bar. And I could have gone crazy with this, but uh, as I've said before, I just want it to be subtle. I don't want to go full blast. And so I kept this about, you know, high 70 some percent. And then merged those layers together. And then one of the last things that I did was I was debating whether or not to do any kind of window pole on this image. And here's why I was debating it. There is a cool view on the other side of this glass. The problem was the time of year that we shot it. As you might be able to see, there's not a ton of uh, leaves on the tree. We were shooting this in the dead of winter. There is a pond on the other side of the glass in their backyard, but, and it's a massive pond. I guess you might even consider it a lake. I think it is a lake now that I, <laughs> I'm talking out loud. There's, it's, it's the dead of winter. There's nothing spectacular on the other side of the glass. Had it been maybe, you know, middle of summer or spring, yeah, I probably would have done a heavier window pull, but I decided to do just a real subtle window pull. Nothing crazy. Again, I don't want these windows to look like posters hung up on the wall. I can't stand that look, even in real estate. It just looks completely fake. If you're going to add a window pole, make sure it still looks realistic. It's just extremely goofy when the outside view looks to be the same exposure or even sometimes darker than the inside. And I did use Lemenzia to try to create this mask to blend in some of that outside view. But as you can see, um, there would still, if I left the mask completely as is, there still would have been some highlight detail coming in in areas that I really didn't want it to. I don't want any highlight detail coming back into these pillars. And the reason Lumenzia thought it wanted to is just because they're, they're lighter tones, they're almost pure white. So then in order to control that mask, all I did was use a technique that I stole from another YouTube photographer, Anthony Turnham. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably come across his videos. He puts out some amazing tutorial videos that goes way more in depth than I do. But you know what? I don't mean to stir the pot and cause a bunch of drama, but I do have one major issue with, with Anthony and he's just too handsome. And as a fellow YouTuber, with uh, a very fragile ego and a ton of insecurities. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't appreciate it. The guy is just way too handsome for YouTube. So um, yeah, let's move on. So I take that layer, add it into its own group. So I know we're actually not grouping anything together. We're just taking this layer and putting it in a group and then brushing that, um, those highlights back in and just the windows, that's it. But here's a problem that I run into when I do that there's still somewhat of an HDRE kind of flat look when, when I do that, there's probably a technique to fix it. So then what I do is I take that layer, add it on top of everything, and then I just do this really, really rough. I start to just paint a normal layer back in, but as you can tell, I, um, I avoid the edges and it's just real subtle here. Let's go back. Yeah, see, I have this opacity back at 29%. It's just to slightly mitigate that HDRE look. I mean, if I can pump it up, you'll start to see some of the edges aren't perfect. And again, this is just a really, really rough, kind of quick and dirty edit. So I wanna keep it subtle. Let's keep it at 30%. 
and uh, call the window pole, uh, call that a day. I merge this together into its own layer, do some hue saturation adjustments to make sure I'm getting rid of some of those crazy rogue colors, the magentas, the, the greens and the blues that don't need to be there. And then I start using color layers to adjust anything that might be slightly off. As you can see, I, I wanna be subtle with this as well. So I, this is at roughly 40%. If I turn this all the way up, like this was just for the rug here. It's a little bit too fake and faux in my opinion. So that's why I keep it down about 40. The next layer was for the wood tones, the wood color. It was There were still some blues that were in there and when I extracted the blues, uh, it made the wood tones now just overall bleak and gray. So I wanted to bring back that, those uh, warm beige and brown colors back in and I left that at 32, but as you can tell, if I left that all the way at 100%, now it just looks orange and completely fake. So let's leave that at about 35-ish. Next up was the couch. There was still, if you zoom in here, as is, there's just some weird spots. There's gray spots here, overly beige, warm colors. There's even some blues still remaining. So I added a color layer to it. Again, being very, very subtle. We're at 40% if I bump this all the way up to 100. Now it just looks too perfect. It looks like a rendering. So we're gonna leave it about 40 and merge that into its own layer. Got rid of that weird highlight on the couch. And then my finishing touches, which I've done on other videos, is just add a little bit of pro contrast and more detail from Color Effects Pro. Do a curves adjustment layer just to give it a real subtle pop of contrast. Now, I'm not completely done. As you can probably tell, there's still some things we need to correct and fix. Uh, I won't spend a ton of time on it. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you know how to correct these on your own. You don't need my tutorial to tell you. These little, this little rainbow highlight there, there's probably still some sensor dust spots. I might take the time to extract these, uh, these vents on the wall. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's pretty much done. I apologize if this went too fast for you. I just bore myself sometimes when I start to over explain and just walk you through every single thing I do on the edits. Uh, I've tried to do it before and it's just so boring. If you have a question over anything, feel free to leave it in the comments. If you got anything out of this video, make sure to drop me one of these. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A Photo. And if you are fairly fresh and new to shooting interiors, maybe you're trying to venture from real estate to architecture and design and maybe work for more interior designers and architects and custom home builders, I highly recommend checking out the video that's popping up on your screen now where I go over, in my opinion, some of the basics of shooting interior photography. Well, if you made it all the way here to the end, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to watch. That'll do it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.